Plains Magazine called David Braid a jazz genius to call our own. In the Halifax Chronicle, the critic claimed if Mozart played jazz, he'd be David Braid. Performing and creating high caliber classical music is Braid's gift. He has written over 60 works. It is my pleasure to welcome David Braid to Studio 4 to tell us more. Hello. I woke up uh, to that music this morning. You did? Simply beautiful. Thank you. Good way to start the day. Thank you. Do you come from a musical family? Absolutely not. Really? Yeah. My parents were very surprised that I <laughs> turned out the way I did. Mm. Born in <laughs> Hamilton. Yeah. Yeah. So Hamilton, um, this is Hamilton in the 1980s. Not, not a lot of, not, not a, a huge art scene going on, let's mm -hmm. say. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, my, my family, we didn't go to concerts. I, I don't think we owned a stereo, actually. Really? Yeah, I think my parents signed me up for piano maybe to control my behavior. Perhaps. You know, my older brother played piano as well, so my mom said when he would practice in the morning, I would crawl over to the piano and put my head against the soundboard. So she thought I might be attracted to music, so she signed mm. me up for lessons. I That's talked to another pianist, and I'm trying to remember who it was, who said he used to sleep under the piano when his mother played. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just to absorb it. Mm. Did you take to it right away, think this is my instrument, or did you play with uh, viola, violin, cello, or trumpet? Well, uh, the piano was definitely my first instrument. Uh, unfortunately, my first teacher, she was from the uh, old school of teaching. You know, mm -hmm. she's, this, I started when I was three and a half, so this was near the end of 1978. And she was the tail end of the old generation that taught by fear, you know. So she, yes. had, she had a big ruler at the end of her piano. So I remember she used to do this exercise where I would have to play, you know, and she'd mm -hmm. stack erasers on my wrists. So, no. of course, if the erasers fell off, you know what was going to happen next. Sure. I, you know? A whack. So, and it was a bad scene. Her, she had a big... You were three? I was three and a half. <laughs> no. <laughs> and she had a big dog that she never washed, and it, the home smelled terrible, and... It was a very bad scene, so I, I got very turned off music. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I got turned off being at her place, and okay. unfortunately, I associated music with this whole experience. I understand that. I had Elsie Spencer, and she had a knitting needle, and when you play the violin and your elbow isn't under the violin, she'd poke it really? with the knitting needle. Yeah, maybe they were related or she'd to cut my, my fingernails if they were too long, wow. hauled me into the back room, but she was kind. Oh, that's nice. So I stayed yeah. with her, but her house smelled funny, too. Is that right? What's that about? <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't so, know. Uh, next teacher, teacher next te two. Okay, well, I studied with this teacher until I was about 12. And my parents were old school too, so they were like, well, if she's yelling at you, you probably deserved it, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> practice harder, right? Mm -hmm. So by the time I was 12, I was honestly getting physically ill at school every Tuesday afternoon because I knew I had to go to her house. Right. So my parents finally said, okay, you don't have to take any lessons anymore. It's like, thank God. So I didn't play again until I was driving to work on a Saturday afternoon when I was 17, I had a little part-time job, and I turned on the radio, and they played a symphony by Mozart, and it changed my life. I was like, this is, this is the, mm. the most interesting so thing So an aha moment in the car. Yeah, exactly. A little uh, Chrysler K car. Really? Yeah. That's why they say uh, you came to music late in life. You mm. really didn't. You came to music at three. Yeah, that's right. You just took a little Sabbatical. vacation. Vacation. I like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Mozart. He got me into music. And who got you into jazz? Well, uh, at, after I heard Mozart, the next day I went down to the, uh, I grew up in Hamilton, Ontario. I grew up, I went to the uh, Hamilton Public Library, maxed out my library card with scores of Mozart. So I took it home. This is the first time I opened my piano since I was 12. So I took out the score, I started playing all the lines. So I became very interested in the architecture of the music. Mm. So I wanted to compose. So at the same time, I, I signed up for like band class in my, my right. school, so I started learning about some instruments. And my band teacher thought, well, if you're interested in composing, you should, you should investigate jazz music because you improvise, and mm -hmm. that's like composing on the spot. I think that's the first time I heard the word jazz. Or Brubeck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, are you good at math? Uh, I took some university math. I wouldn't say I'm as good as people who are mathematicians. Okay, but no Stephen like Hawking. Definitely, uh, he's a few levels above me, that's for sure. <laughs> you worked with him, though, or I, you wrote a piece for him. I did, yeah. In my last year of university, he came. Um, I went to U of T. He came to give this lecture, and the university wanted to give him a gift, and they thought maybe 
he doesn't want another fruit basket or something. So they're like, why don't we do something special? We'll have a piece of music written for him. Mm. So I wrote this piece. He had this thank you dinner. I performed the piece. And I had this nice five minutes with Stephen Hawking because he's really into music. On the battery of his wheelchair, he has Gustav Mahler's name really? written on, on the battery of his Gustav wheelchair. Gustav Mahler? Why yeah. Mahler? Did, did maybe he say? He didn't say. He didn't yeah, say. Maybe, I just think maybe it's the energy of the Perhaps. music. Perhaps. But he's really into music, so we had this nice chat, and he, he, he wanted to look at the score. You know, it, it, was, it was quite nice. I'll never forget it. Mm. How did you really learn to do it, though? To do I what? mean, you sat down and composed. You, oh. you sat down at your piano after mm. your sabbatical, uh -huh. tinkled away. Just, I had a sound. Where do you start? I, I don't think you start anywhere, really. Oh, actually, maybe you do start somewhere. Maybe, maybe because this comes up a lot when, sometimes when people come for lessons for Im improvisation or composition. Mm -hmm. People say, I don't know where to start. The thing is, they say, I don't know what to do. But I think in, in actual fact, you have too many options. That's why you can't start. So starting is really confining your parameters. So you have a very simple idea that you can build something with. Once your creative ideas are constrained, it's very easy to have ideas flow from them. It's, you're almost paralyzed by too mm. much. And too do you hear options. the melody in your head and it comes through your hands? Or that's you write part. notes? Or I don't know. It, that's a don't mysterious know, part. Because yeah. it is a gift in many ways. It has to be, because we don't all have it. I, I don't know. I, I disagree. I think, I think we're, all, I mean, we're all artists to some degree. It's just uh, how to bring it out of you. Right, and get rid of the fear. That's a big part of it. For sure. Okay. Uh, whether you make art or, or play an instrument, uh, perform, to get out of the way of yourself, mm -hmm. to let it flow. Absolutely. I think any, uh, John Irving, when he writes books, he writes the last sentence first. Oh, is that right? Yeah. yeah Go figure. Yeah. But it's his just his way of doing it. Yeah. And some teacher may tell him one day, oh, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> you should make an outline. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So 60 works. 60 like you're works. what, 36? That's 35? right. 35? 30, yeah, yeah uh, 36. No, you don't look that okay. old. <laughs> <laughs> 60 works. All That's right. amazing. I work hard. You sure do. Mm. Do you have a routine uh, for the day, a practice routine? Yes, I do. I, I um, just, I, you know, I have a bit of a reputation for someone who, no, I mean, I want to be a professional musician. Not, I want to be busy. I want to, I want to do this until I can't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. So I know with, and it's a gift to be able to do this. So I don't want to, I don't want to waste any time, you know. So, so I get up early. I practice in the morning. How early? Uh, it depends. Uh, lately, I've been getting up a little bit earlier than usual, maybe 6, 6.30. 6 you know. And uh, you start playing immediately, or do you have a cup of coffee? A cup of tea. I'm cup a tea, tea connoisseur, so I'm having some nice tea. Oh, really? Then I uh, um, practice mm -hmm. for a few hours, maybe write some music in the morning. It's a good period in the morning, I think, yeah. to be creative. And then I like practicing in the evening as well. Uh, before a concert, like sure. tonight? Yes. Uh, do you have a routine? Yeah, basic routine. Um, I need to uh, make sure my hands are warm, you know, so mm. I need to do an hour warm up or so. Sure. Maybe have a nice meal mid afternoon, take a shower, be rested. It's like being an athlete, you know, so just being prepared for a performance right. in a similar way. You want to feel rested, feel fed, um, and be limber. Sure. Do you yeah. do some exercises yeah. or anything? Sure, just like an athlete would stretch. Like just like an athlete, because yeah. it is an athletic it is thing. very much it really is and it's very intense and very focused yes uh how many cds how many c oh how many cds have i made mm -hmm. uh well uh, my own cds i think i have nine or ten now because you really you did yeah. one with canadian brass that's true that was recent just last year oh great we recorded uh i wrote eight pieces for them which we recorded brass quintet and piano played gershon with the winnipeg symphony did yeah uh, do you have you written your own pieces and performed a symphony Yes, in that same concert, the theme of the concert was, um, I think it was concert music inspired by jazz. So they thought, let's get a jazz pianist to come and play. So I played Rhapsody Blue mm. with them, and, and I said, hey, well, I'm going to be here. He said, would you like to write a piece? I'm like, sure. So I wrote a piece, and it was, it was like a concerto, but for an improvising pianist instead of um, a non-improvising How about piece. you and Diana Krall doing dueling pianos? That would be fun. That would be, that would be fun. <laughs> Wouldn't it? <laughs> sure. I think so. Sure. Mm -hmm. Where do you want to go from here? Where do I want to go from uh, here? Uh, for lunch, I know, but oh. you know, like you're so solid in your desire and your passion hmm. for your music. Uh, what would be a dream for you? To play a fazioli? <laughs> uh, you well, probably have. I, I, 
Fraziolas are nice pianos. I, I, honestly, it's just I want to do a slightly better job of what I do tomorrow than mm. I do today. Mm. That's that's it. That's all I want to do. Do you have a teacher still? No, no. I, I, I mean, I would say, uh, or a coach. People, not not a dedicated coach. Just people that that I feel influence me. But they're not they're not musicians. You know, they're really? just sort of people I know, colleagues. Mm -hmm. I feel I gain inspiration and energy from them. What was it like to win your first Juno? Honestly, um, I mean, I was very surprised because, you know, being a late comer into music and you, you don't expect such things, right. you know. But uh, it, uh, it actually happened, it just kind of passed me by. Like, I, I found that I feel more fertile when I'm thinking about what I'm going to do next rather than what I've just done. Mm -hmm. So when things, awards come up, I'm very obviously very thankful because it can maybe open some opportunities. But really, I, I just got up the next morning and did my routine and practice. And, you know. How was your speech? I, uh, you know what? I wasn't even there. <laughs> I didn't no. go. I was like, I'm not going to win. You know, I'm not going to go. <laughs> so so I, bother? I was playing. I, I was playing in, I think I was playing in Toronto that night. Mm -hmm. So I, I just didn't bother didn't going. Didn't go. But, but actually, when I played. You got a phone call. Uh, yeah, someone sent a message to the, the club where I was playing and said, hey, guess what? You know, so that and was why they do know. Yeah, how about that? How about that? Carnegie Hall? It'd be nice to be a part of that. I have not played there. Mm -hmm. It'd be nice to, uh, I mean, there's such a tradition of music there. It'd yeah. be nice to have a sure, and you have connection time. to it. I have time. You know, mid-30s, you have lots of time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So tonight at the Faye and Milton Wong Experimental Theater, SFU Woodward's, yeah. uh, 7.30, David Braid in concert. Well, nice to see you. Nice to see you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, David Braid, uh, pianist, jazz pianist, too. Remember, you can enjoy Studio 4 conversations on YouTube or follow us on Twitter at Fanny Studio 4. Tomorrow, law professor Joel Bakken reveals the widespread exploitation of children by profit-seeking corporations, how marketers target our kids, and why we don't protect them. And location, 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 real estate financing expert Peter Kinch expands on his real estate action plan. And an award-winning photographer shows off his beautiful wildlife pictures of Vancouver Island from Barclay to Clackwood. Thanks for watching Studio 4. There will be lots more on Shaw TV, only on Shaw TV.